All right, all right. Hey, everybody. Hey, it's Nick Shell, the host of Receding Hairline. That's right. I'm Nick Shell, your host. I have a receding hairline, and I'm so confident to tell you all about my stories and, and, and help you uh, psychologically overcome all this. And yes, I have a receding hairline, but will the free market accept that? You know, on an internet channel, yes. Like this, yes. Uh, but in, in the TV world, in the movie world, will they accept that? Maybe not so much. Maybe the free market is not okay with that. Why would it be that all of these leading actors have hair? Well, a lot of them, I'm, I'm learning, have had procedures done to have that hair, which they wouldn't normally. And then a lot of them, uh, I guess they rise through the ranks just because they do have hair. They're more likely to, to be chosen because of that. The ones who, who don't have hair, uh, that are still hosts and uh, in the spotlight, have been there a while and they've earned that status. Like, uh, what's his name? Uh, the Today Show guys, Al Roker and Matt, the half Jewish guy, whatever his name is, Matt Lauer, is that his name? You know, they, they're, what, they're probably in their 60s or about to be and they've shaved their head and Howie Mandel's another host. Uh, again, I think he's in his 60s, shaves his head. They didn't start out that way. They had hair, people got used to him and then they, shave their hair and it's fine but it's interesting because what I'm seeing here is a connection or a pattern here in which here, here's what I, here's my theory so if you're a man and you want to be in front of a camera you got to have good hair you have to have hair uh, and you and in theory it's harder to get away with having the shaved head if you're the more friendly type of hosting sort of gig okay so there's sort of this certain standard that if you're going to be in front of the camera, you need to have hair. Uh, why? Is it because the producers and the directors are just jerks? No. It's it's the free market. The free market decides, we want to see a friendly guy with hair because he's more. we can trust him more. Right? Now, on the other side of that, I think the, the, the trade-off for women would be that if you want to be a woman in front of the camera, typically you have to be fit. Uh, and if you are plus size, then you're labeled. We, and here's our plus size, you know, and, and that they have that going along with them uh, as, a, as a burden of sorts compared to, to those who don't. So it's like this. It's like, well, why can't we just have, you know, regular size women on, on uh, in magazines and TVs and movies? Well, it's because women don't buy those magazines for when they want to look at beauty stuff. They're going to look at the ones with the skinny women who have these too high standards. And so I guess that's sort of the same thing. Of course, the problem I have, what keeps it from being a perfect analogy, is that you can actually control your weight. You can eat right and you can exercise and you can commit to that and you can actually control that. Of course, men, we can only control our hair by getting something done, by having a, a procedure done uh, of some sorts or or being a slave to the Rogaine, which I just, I'm just, and it's not gonna do it. I can't be a slave. Uh, I can't be a slave, no. Um, I will, I will go bald before I become a slave to a corporation. Nick Shell the Rebel says that. All right, so, will the free market accept me as I lose my hair with the hair that I have now? Because I mean, I am slowly losing hair. Depending on who you ask, it's worse than others. Some people say, Nick, shave that off, it looks horrible. And then the others say, what receding hairline? But as I mentioned yesterday, I do uh, plan to, I'm trying to uh, take this to the next level. I'd love to, to get into TV, that's been my plan, and as far as hosting and, and so that sort of thing. It's what I've wanted to do. And it's funny, I'll close with this story. The guy from Blue's Clues, whatever his real name is, I forgot. But you know, Steve, Blue's Clues, that guy. He actually chose to let, to leave the show, but one of the reasons is he didn't want to vis, vis, what is it? He didn't want to visibly age on TV. He didn't want to visibly age on screen. Uh, and if you look him up now, he, he has to shave his head because he's lost that much hair. I mean, he's I'm, I'm, I'm trailing behind him, and that's my future. But I guess here he was probably late 20s playing that role trying to look like this young guy and here he is having to have his hair longer and all that stuff and he thought I could keep this role but I don't want to age on screen now granted when it's all said and done I think he's still worth 10, 10 million dollars even though he walked away from that job but uh, I think it's an, an interesting thing that as a man it, because of this standard that 
the free market wants to see men with hair if they have a, a friendly role uh, and not an intimidating rock or Vin Diesel role that you gotta have you gotta have full head of hair not because the producers say it but because that's what people want to see and that's what people are gonna tune in to see so could I become the exception of the rule is the question can I weasel my way into the free market uh, with with uh, out having to uh, do any extremes on my hair because I'm not going to do it. I'm too much of a rebel. And I get it that like Steve Carell, I mean, what, in season two I, around there is what we've decided that he had his hair transplant in and he ended up having a huge career. What if he hadn't done that? What if his, his career had gone as far? Same thing with Joe McHale. He had his hair transplant and he got his own show and he, he was successful and all that. But it, it, with Community, had they not had the tra hair transplants, would they have still had the same career opportunities. And with, and you know, it's funny because, you know, Steve Carell, how many tens of millions of dollars is he worth? And, you know, he had to decide, okay, I can either do something about my hair and uh, keep these roles coming in, or I can lose my hair and maybe not have the same opportunities. You know, and I'm sure in reality, those roles, uh, a lot of his roles he's gotten have been because he does still have a full head of hair, even if it's not natural, even if it's because of a procedure, I mean. Um, so, you know, and me being a Dave Ramsey guy, I care so much about investing money and saving money. It'd be weird. What, what if someone, what, it is a great question. What if someone came to me and said, Nick, we're going to, we're going to make you a deal. We're, we're going to make you the host of this show and we're going to pay you X million dollars. So you'll be set for life. We're going to give you a million dollar contract based on, depending on you getting uh, what is it called? The graphings, whatever it is, you know, a uh, transplant. <laughs> Pending on you getting a transplant, would you do it? Now, I guess in that circumstance, then I finally would be tempted because it's like, well, that's money though. And it, I, I, I just always want the freedom to be able to, to shave my head and there not be scars. I want that. But what I want it more than millions of dollars, well, that's when it would be kind of dumb not to if it meant making the money. So I can't fault Steve Carell or Joe McHale at all for their decisions, because I'm sure there's a certain point when you realize if it means making this much money by having the right hair, even if it goes against my fundamental principles, at some point, the money's gonna mean something to me. Just like with me being a vegan. I mean, I haven't eaten meat in years, animal products in years. But if someone said, Nick, I'll pay you a million dollars to eat a cheeseburger, well, yeah, there's going to come a, a, a difference where my beliefs change because of that. I'll admit that. So, for the right amount of money, yeah, I'd get a hair transplant if it meant a career worth that much money. But just for the sake of feeling better about myself or something like that, I wouldn't because I already feel confident in myself. And I guess that's the thing about it. I wouldn't... And it's funny how hypothetical this whole thing is because... Right now, no one's offering me a TV hosting job can, pending on me getting a hair transplant. This is all hypothetical. But if it was, I'm willing to admit I'd do it for the money. If it meant that that's what, how I'd get the job, I'd do it for the money. I wouldn't do it for the happiness because I'm already happy and content and confident. See, and I think that's the difference. I'm already happy and confident in myself with the hair that I do or do not have. So I wouldn't do it for that reason. I'd only do it for the money because I'd want to invest that money because I'm seriously I'm one of those kind of guys that I just want money to invest it not to spend it or to show it off so thank you for watching this video you've helped me think through some questions that I didn't even plan to ask in this video I was simply going to do a video about the free market but really would I get a hair transplant if it meant getting a steady gig uh, hosting and, and that I could ultimately be worth millions of dollars yeah I guess it'd be dumb not to right this is Nick Shell, the internet receding hairline guy.